and welcome to this series on Mindset Gabanga Educator videos for Grade 5 Mathematics. The real world consists of two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. Some of the shapes we see are formed naturally while others are man-made. At school, we study man-made shapes known as geometric shapes and these shapes have properties that give them meaning. Mathematics teachers have the responsibility of giving learners knowledge of these properties so that learners can distinguish in their own minds the similarities and differences between geometric shapes. Language and concepts play a key role in generating this understanding. Hands-on experience with the shapes and explaining the properties with correct use of language and meaning serve to make mathematical connections in the learners' minds. Sound teacher knowledge of what learners should know when they enter a particular grade need to be addressed. Teachers have to ensure that all learners are thoroughly prepared to proceed to the next grade so that new or more difficult concepts pertaining to the same mathematical idea can be developed in the higher grade. The teacher must therefore be cognizant of the assessment standard in the previous, current and future grade. 2D and 3D shapes often have links with one another in terms of their geometric structure and learners must be able to verbalize and recognize these links. In grade 4, learners should have been introduced to different geometric shapes and objects including prisms and pyramids as they can be seen and so described in an environmental context through pictures or objects brought into the classroom. In grade 5, prisms are studied in more detail for their mathematical properties with links made to rectangles and squares and they are introduced to terminology associated with 3D shapes. In grade 6, learners extend their knowledge to properties of different pyramids with links made to triangles and other 2D shapes that are found at the base of the pyramid. My guest today in studio is Erna Lampen. Hello, Erna, and welcome. Hello. Erna is currently working at the Verd School of Education. She has a master's degree in the spatial development of the young child, and she has teaching experience from preschool to university level. Geometry is one of her hobbies. Erna, what, in your opinion, is the reason that learners struggle with geometry at high school level? High school geometry requires reasoning that is based on the relationships between properties of figures and very often high school students don't even understand the properties of figures so there's no way that they can reason about the relationships between properties and why are these properties important all shapes are actually connected if we think of three-dimensional shapes like boxes if we make boxes, we use two-dimensional shapes to make them. For instance, to make a cube, you will use squares. Squares and rectangles and other quadrilaterals can be cut, out, can be cut up into triangles. So if we know the properties of the figures, we can make the shapes that we want to make. It gives us power to organize space. And why are these properties so important? All shapes are actually related to each other. If you think of three-dimensional shapes like boxes, they're made up of two-dimensional shapes. Think of a cube, it's made up of squares. Squares, again, can be cut into triangles. So if we understand the properties and the relationships between them, we can make the shapes that we want to make. It gives us power to organize our space. And how best would learners in the intermediate phase learn about these properties? The best way is to give the materials hands-on, goal-directed, problem-solving activities. For instance, make a cube. How many squares do you need? So we have to have that problem-solving activity where learners have to take apart figures in their heads and put them back together again. 
So, besides studying shapes in the classroom, how else can learners improve their understanding of shape in the intermediate phase? I think shape should also be studied outside the classroom. We learn different things if we have to draw, for instance, a circle, a big circle on the playground, than just tracing around a circle, circular shape on a piece of paper. How would you draw a circle on the playground? To do that, learners might make a plan that say, they'll put a peg in the ground and have a string and ha keep the string taut and walk. Now that gives us an opportunity to talk about the properties of a circle. There must be a center point and a radius of a fixed length. So working with shape on a big scale outside teaches us more about space. And Erna, why is it important to think spatially? Our world is spatial. If I think of the chairs we sit on, somebody had to design it, somebody had to make it. That in required spatial knowledge. You know computer games and videos all require understanding of space. How do you design something that is three-dimensional to look right on a two-dimensional space? Mm. And our children are going to live in computerized worlds, so their spatial understanding must actually be much better than ours needed to be. What misconceptions can develop in learning if they do not understand the properties of the different shapes? You know, I don't know if it's so much misconceptions rather than limiting conceptions. Ah. You know, conceptions that keep them fixed. A square is a square only if it looks like a square in a textbook, nicely on its one side. We need learners to be able to understand that even if we turn shapes around, even if we see it from different perspectives, when do they keep their properties and in what medium? If we draw it, we probably have to change properties, but we want them to understand that. And if they don't understand the properties, they're fixed into textbook shapes. And I think that's very important. Um, if knowledge that should be learned in grade four is weak, will that affect the next grade? Obviously so. Yeah. What we're trying to do through foundation phase and intermediate phase, we're trying to build a web of relationships between the properties. And you can think of a spider's web. If the one thread is weak, the whole thing will collapse in the end, of the more course. we try to build on it. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's important. Thank you very much, Erna, for joining me here in studio. That's a pleasure. Misconceptions about shape and why these affect learners' knowledge from one grade to another. Consequences for learners if teachers' knowledge of a previous grade is absent. Use example to support these. Now, let's look at how the similarities and differences are generated by the learners themselves, but remember the key points to look out for in the classroom study. Notice how prior knowledge of 2D shapes is recapped in terms of name of shape. Links are made with 2D and 3D shapes through visual means first. Discussion then with words that are used in a table that is organized in order to reinforce knowledge of presence. I have some shapes on my hands and this shape are called the two-dimensional shapes but we only call them in short we say the 2D shapes. Now these are the flat shapes. Now what is the name of this shape that I have here? Rectangle. It's a rectangle and what is the name of this shape? A triangle. And this one? Square. And what is the name of this shape? Pentagon. And this one? Hexagon. Now we're moving on to the three-dimensional shapes, and in short, we call them 3D shapes. Now this first shape here is called the cube. I want each of you to show me the cube in your group. That's good. And then the next shape, that I'm going to show you is the shape which is called a rectangular prism. Show me the rectangular prism. That's good. And the next one is the triangular prism. Show me the triangular prism. And what do you think will be the name of this shape? 
pentagonal prism. This is a pentagonal prism. Show me the pentagonal prism, those who have it. And the last shape is the hexagonal prism. This is the hexagonal prism because it has six sides. I want you to focus on the 2D square and the 3D cube. You are going to tell me the similarities between these two shapes and also the differences between these two shapes. So I want you to have a look at your square and your cube and give me all the similarities and all the differences. Not a long story, I just want the differences and the similarities. Is it sides? Four. A piece of the wood. A face 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 of the wood. Now, I want one member in each group to answer me. So what did you find out? What is similar and what is different? Let's start in this group. So what did you find out, Fatima? Madam, the difference of these two shapes are the square is a flat shape. It's flat. And? And it has four sides. It has four sides. That's good. While the cube, the cube, ha the cube has six, six square faces and it has height. The cube has six square faces and it has height. That's good. Now from the other groups, did you all find these similarities and differences? Yes. Now we're going to move on to the rectangle and the rectangular prism. I want you to look at your rectangle and the rectangular prism and you're also going to look for similarities and the differences. Short sides are equal and from here. Uh, uh, two sides are shaped like what? Look at the two. two and then how many are shaped like rectangles? Uh, uh, equal and the other four are, 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 are yeah. no, two sides are squares and the other four is uh, tangles. Now your time is up. I want Bianca's group to give us their findings. So what did you find out about the rectangle? Madam, the rectangle is flat. It's flat. And it is two equal opposite sides. Two equal opposite sides and the regular prism the rectangular prism has two square uh, faces equal faces two square, square faces. faces and four rectangular faces four rectangular faces faces they're equal Anything it has else? Height. It has height. That's very good. Is there any group that has different answers from this ones? No. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next shape, and that is the triangle and the triangular prism. Now you're going to look at the triangle and the triangular prism. 
you can start. Now it, the time is up. We'll ask Juera's group to give us their findings. For the triangle, we found that it's a flat surface. It, it is flat. It's a flat shape. And it has three equal sides. It has three sides. And for the triangular prism? It has height. It has height. And? Three equal rectangular faces. Three equal rectangular faces. And two equal triangular faces. That's very good. Two equal triangular faces. That was very good. Now I'm going to put up the other names of the shapes and you're going to do it on your own. And you can start doing it. We can see how different 2D shapes are linked to different prisms. You have also learned that all 3D shapes have height and their flat areas are called faces and not sides. Notice that the more sides the base of a prism has, the more rectangles are needed to join the bases together. The number of faces are placed next. In grade 6, you will meet the words faces and bases when you study pyramids. And that's all we have time for today. Until next time, Rishwa Kejwi, goodbye.